الرحمن الرحیم uh, We've been talking about letter 69 of نهج البلاغة That is the letter that Imam Ali alayhi salam wrote to one of his close companions a very sincere man, very knowledgeable man. His name was Al-Harith Al-Hamdani. In the last few nights, we focus on the first part of this letter that Imam wrote about Tamasak Bahabl al-Quran, be connected to the words of Allah, the book of our Creator. And then he spoke about how the Quran should be the source of your moral education, your legal education, and also your historical education. You learn from this book about akhlaq, you learn from this book about what is halal and haram, right and wrong, and you learn from this book about the facts that happen in human history, and you can rely on that with whatever in the Quran, it is true. Then the Imam spoke, then the Imam wrote about how to learn lessons from the past to practice it at the present time and the future. Tonight we are going to focus on another line of this letter. The Imam wrote, وَأَكْثَرْ ذِكْرَ الْمَوْتِ وَمَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ وَلَا تَتَمَنَّ الْمَوْتَ إِلَّا بِشَرْتٍ وَثِيقٍ He's saying that, Ya Harith, remember the day of your departure repeatedly. He didn't say, وَذْكُرَ الْمَوْتِ Just remember death. He said, أَكْثَر means remember it repeatedly, a lot. Keep remember that there is a day of departure from this dunya. I'm not telling you to wish to die. That is not, you know, a, a pleasant prayer to, to ask for death. He said, except you are sure that your next home is harmonious for you. I mean, if you are not ready, if you know that you know, you have not saved enough for this trip, so what would be the point of dying now? It's better to take advantage of life and fix your future first. Without that, if you ask for to die now, and there is nothing that you save for next life, that is not really something that may benefit you. So that is the point here, that Imam wants Harith to remember the day that he lives this life and to remember that a lot. Somebody asked the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, Ya Rasulullah, هل يحشر مع الشهداء أحد؟ Can someone, without being shaheed, without being martyred, but be considered one of the martyrs? قال نعم. The Prophet said yes. من يذكر الموت في اليوم والليلة عشرين مرة. If someone remembers his or her departure from this life, that always, he said, at least 20 times a day. If you can 20 times a day, think about the moment of departure from this life. 
you will be considered one of the martyrs. That means that God would reward you the rewards of the martyrs if you remember that, that transition 20 times a day. There is another uh, hadith from the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyarat al -qubur. I used to tell you not to go to cemetery a lot. We don't know what was the reason why in the beginning Prophet didn't want his companion to go to cemetery a lot. There were some reasons because the Muslim community was new, the, the cemetery was mixed, and there were some confusion. In the beginning, the Prophet didn't encourage people to go to the cemetery. But then he said, at this time I will tell you, Fazur al -qubur. Start, go and visit the cemeteries. Because when you visit a cemetery, that would purify your soul that makes you more humble and at the same time it reminds you the Akhirah. So in this case the Prophet wants the Muslim community to remember the day of departure through visiting the cemetery. Because when you go and you see all the graves in the cemetery, you start thinking about death. Now, why the Qur'an does emphasize on uh, the importance of remembrance of that departure. Number one is that death is a fact. There is no doubt about death. Can anyone doubt, say, oh, I might be an exception. You know, I'm not going to die. Everybody so far died, but I am an exception. That is a wishy-washy thought. That is not real. La rayba fiha. Allah Himself says, La rayba fiha. There is no doubt about that. In the Sa'at Aatiyat, La rayba fiha. Walakin akthar nas la yu'minu. Though this is a fact, it's 100%, no doubt about it, but still, majority of people don't believe it. Can you, can you think about this? Can you believe that majority of people don't believe something that's 100%? Well, that is the foolishness that, uh, you know, the Luman Jahula, the Quran says that we, we are ignorant about so many things. How can someone doubt death? وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِكَ الْيَقِينَ The Quran says, worship the Lord till the moment that yaqeen. Yaqeen means certainty. Yaqeen in this verse means death. It's continue your worship till the time of yaqeen, the time of certainty, as it meant to be death. That means death is the time of truth, the time of certainty. The time of yaqeen. If this is something yaqeen, means 100%, if this is something la rayba fihi, there is no doubt about that, then Imam Ali says, كَيْفَ غَفَلْتُمْ عَمَّا لَيْسَ يَغْفِلُكُمْ How can you forget something that's not going to forget you? How can you be negligent of something or someone that's not going to be negligent of you. While they are not going to forget you, how you forget them? Death is not going to forget you. How do you forget about that? In غَدًا مِنَ الْيَوْمِ قَرِيبِ Imam Ali is saying that tomorrow is very near, very close to today. Now today it like Thursday, tomorrow is Friday. How far Friday from Thursday? Imam Ali is saying that the moment of death is just like tomorrow compared to today. In another time, Imam Ali said, Ayyuhannas, kullumr, kullumr in laqin ma yafirru minhu fi ferare. Means that 
you guys are escaping from death while you will meet something that you are fleeing from. And the faster you are running, the sooner you are meeting with that. That is the reality. You are fleeing from that, but it is coming. So this is how much the hadith and the ayat wanted us to remember repeatedly our road to our destination, which is, which is death. Now, what is really the point of remembering death? If you remember death, is it something that just be sad and start crying that, oh, I'm going to die, you know, and be depressed. And you say, well, if I'm going to die, why should I have to work? There is no point of working and making money and getting married and having a job and buying a house or a car and all this headache, if I'm going to die, it's not even worth it. Does really remembrance of death mean to be sad, to cry, to be depressed, to be lazy, to be irresponsible? None of them. As a matter of fact, to remember death a lot means to have more appreciation for your life. It means to be more responsible for this life. To remember death means to show more happiness and more satisfaction that, oh, I'm alive, I have this gift of life, I'm so happy for this opportunity. As a matter of fact, we are so more satisfied than sad for being alive. This is a great gift and we must use it. So why we should be sad about having such a great gift? The point about remembering death is just we know one day we have to say goodbye. You know, everybody's casket come here. Recently we had a janaza here and somebody from the family came and was talking, a girl from the family, probably it was uh, her grandfather. And she said, grandfather, I, I don't say, you know, goodbye. I would say, see you soon or see you later. That is the fact. That's not about saying goodbye to somebody who died, like it was just for that person and goodbye, like you are here forever and you are gone. No. She said, see you later. That is the reality. If we have this idea in our mind that this is our destination, so what remembrance of death does is that we feel just more humble. We feel more pure. There should be more purity in our heart, more humbleness, more loving heart, that you feel more compassion, more mercy, more love, more humility, more peace, more understanding, more reconciliation, more connection with other human beings. So remembrance of death is not depression, it's not sadness, it's not laziness, it's not irresponsibility, it's not stop working, it's not be careless. And the opposite is to be more careful, more working, more active, but at the same time more humble, more happy, more satisfied, more responsible. This is the, the meaning that we get from, from death. We know that, you know, there's an example, uh, the expression here that they said that everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die, right? Well, if you want to go to heaven, the bridge to heaven is death. That is what Imam Hussein said, al mawtu qantara, means that's the bridge that takes us to that final destination. But unfortunately, in our culture, 
and black human culture. When people talk about death, they make a monster out of death. It's so scary, so frightening. You know, imagine there is a janazah here and the meeting is over and we are leaving. How many would be volunteer to stay with the dead body for the entire night? Everybody is scared of the dead body. Why are you are scared? This guy, when he was alive, he wouldn't do anything. He couldn't do anything when he was alive. Now he's even dead. So why you are you scared? It's just the, the culture understanding that people don't want to even talk about that. You go to many of these churches, majority, they don't talk about the fact of death. They want to talk about life, which is good, but not death. Why this should be a scary? Why you are scared of death? Why there is such a fear? Why is it that people use death when they want to kill somebody, they use death? You know, I should die, like when they want to kill someone, right? Yeah, this is almaut lekada, almaut lekada, you know, the death to this or death to that. The time that people want to really express their maximum hate for something or someone, they use the expression of death, almaut. Yeah, there are some people who say almaut la America, and there are some people who say almaut la ada America. Both, both groups, they are sending death to one another. Looks like there is nothing worse than death, that they are using it like the worst curse against one another. Like this animal, uh, what was uh, his name? Uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, this animal that in Oregon killed two uh, American citizens, two heroes who tried to help that girl who was under intimidation and harassment of this Jeremy, this animal, a racist and hateful person, uh, he, he was saying in the train that all Muslim must die. You know, the, the hate and racism and ignorance and ugliness and evil and ignorance and injustice of this individual of sending death to all Muslims. What kind of expression, what kind of evil intention and personality of a person to wish death to entire community or a country. So this is the, the, the fact that we need to analyze that why is it, why is it that the death that should be something considered as a, a source of humbleness and uh, the kindness and mercy it becomes a source of fear and something, something scary. The reason is that people do not understand the reality of death. Because they have a wrong definition of death. They do not understand the reality of death. That is why they are scared or they hate or they don't want to talk about it or they are sad to think about it, that is the reason. But if people have a real understanding that a death means a ruju'u ilallah, ilayhi turja'un, that the moment of departure from this dunya is the moment of meeting with the Lord, then it's totally different understanding. If you say, inna lillahu inna ilayhi raja'un, we return to our Lord. We, we belong to Him and we return to Him. If death means returning to the source of love and wisdom and truth and guidance and grace, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then really death should be something even exciting for Imam Ali that you know, the definition of Imam Ali or Imam Hussein, إِنِّي لَا أَرَى الْمَوْتِ إِلَّا سَعَادَ For him, even death is the moment of salvation. Why? Because they know the, the real meaning of death. 
They understand the purpose of this life, the meaning of this life, the beginning of this life, the end of this life. For them, that's different. This is why the Quran says, Ya ayyuha alladheena haadu anza'amtum annakum awliyaa'u lillahi min doonin naas فَتَمَنَّوُ الْمَوْتَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ وَلَا يَتَمَنَّوْنَهُ أَبَدًا بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالظَّالِمِينَ قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَى عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ It's beautiful passage. In the Holy Quran, talking with Yahud, that they were so like proud of themselves, and they said that we are the only friends of God. Nobody else have this connection, this friendship. We have a special friendship with God, and God is saying that if you are honest about this statement, that you are really friends of God. And you know when you die, you meet your friends. So why is it that none of you like to die? Why are you so scared of death if death means meeting with your friend? And you consider God as your only friend, you should be very happy to meet with him. Why you are scared? And why you, you hate to die? That is not an honest thing. When Imam Hussain السلام, used to say, Sabra lakum, ya bani karam, fal mawtu, faman mawtu illa qantara. Just be patient. Don't be scared of death. Because that is a bridge that takes you from this materialistic world. The moment of death is the moment of freedom from this small cage, this prison called Duriya and provide you with a flight to eternity, to heavens. So that moment is moment of liberation, the moment of freedom that you are going to take this journey and to be settled in the residence of the righteous. That is paradise. So why are you worried from moving from prison to paradise. This is the understanding of the Quranic understanding of the death. So it's not something to be scared of. You know, to understand, to compare this life of this dunya with akhirah is to compare the life of a fetus, the baby in the womb of the mom, compared to this world. Now, you know, any time that there is a delivery, the baby is crying because the baby wants to stay where it is, right? You think the womb of the mom is just comfortable, it's heaven for, for the baby. doesn't want to come to this world because the baby has no understanding. The baby thinks that the womb of mom is the best. But when he comes or she comes to this world and grow up, is any of us at this time would like to go back to the womb of the mom? None of us would like to do that, right? Because after you see this spacious world and the, the sky, the heavens, the earth, the ocean, the, limp, the, the rivers, the, the mountains, the stars, the trees, the flowers, the food, the water, people, all these beauties in this world, you don't wish to go back to the womb of your mom anymore is exactly the life of this dunya compared to hereafter, compared to akhirah. Since we have no idea about akhirah, we, we think that it's good to stay in this small cage. But when we realize that the world is different, we realize that the moment that we live this life is not the end of it, because we are scared because we think that uh, you know, death is the end of life. We think that death means nothingness. We think that when we die, when we turn to Adam, like everything ends, is 
total destruction. In reality, death is not total destruction. The death is just separation between our body and our soul. The body goes to the, to the grave, right? The body dies, but the soul never dies. The soul never dies. And this is why still we go to the cemetery and still we say salam to people in the cemetery. It is not to the body that is buried under the ground. The salam is to their souls. And the souls, they receive this salam and salutation from us. It's exactly like you see the deceased people in your dream. How many times we have people who already died, we see them in our dream. That is soul. How we see them? This is our soul and their soul. Even now, you know, the technique of hypnotism. Have you seen that? I have seen that. Like somebody comes and puts somebody in sleep. And then uh, the, the sleeper is under the command of this guy. And the person is sleeping. The body is sleeping. But then he just talks with him and moves him back and forth and commands him to do certain things. This is the soul of the person. The body is sleeping. This means that the soul is independent. The soul is the one that makes us. Like you and I will say, I. Who is this I? Is it my body or my soul? Like I, I'm almost 60 now. When I say that, one day I was going to a school and I was like seven years old. And then I went there and then I went to the cemetery and to the seminary and then to, you know, all this. I keep saying I. If, if this I is my body, my body changed many times. Every seven, eight years, the, all the cells of the body change and replacement of new cells. So I change in my life so far physically more than 10 times. So how can I say I went to elementary school? I should say somebody else went to elementary school, somebody else went to high school, somebody else went to university, somebody else went to the house or seminary, somebody else went to America, you know, it should be somebody else. And now I know. If it's body, I cannot say oh, I'm a different person. Physically, I change. I'm not the same person of 50 years ago. So why still I keep saying I? I am the person who went to uh, school. It is my soul. It is, not, it is not my body. And you know that even some people, they claim that they have communication with souls. Haven't you heard that some people, I don't know if it's true or not, if it is true, it's really very meaningful. It's a good thing. If some people are able to communicate with the souls of those people who already died, and they ask that, what happened to you? Where are you? They ask questions. Sometimes they even put it on TV. I'm not sure if it's true, but we know that, like the, the prophets, that the imam, they were able to communicate with the souls of Amwad. They could do it. Now, if science and technology can do the same thing, that's just more confirmation for the fact that souls don't die. Only the body dies. When we go to cemetery, say, Assalamu ala ahl al-diyar min al-mu'mineen wal-muslimin antum lana farad wa nahnu insha'Allah bikum lahiqoon Salam to you O oh, residents of Alam al-Arwah, you are ahead of us and we will join you. That means that we are talking with the souls. Somebody is listening. You have heard about the story of Imam Ali salam that when he returned from the battle of Safin and he arrived in Kufa, Raja'a min Safin fa ashrafa ala al-qubur bil Kufa. He he stopped there, the cemetery in Kufa, and he started talking with the, with the dead in the, in the cemetery. He said, أَمَّا الدُّورُ فَقَدْ سُكِنَتْ وَأَمَّا الْأَزْوَاجُ فَقَدْ نُكِحَتْ 
وأما الأموال فقد قسمت هذا خبر ما عندنا فما خبر ما عندكم ثم التفت إلى أصحابه فقال عليه السلام أما والله لو أذن لهم في الكلام لأخبروكم أن خير الزاد تقوى He said now First I want to say salam to you And secondly I want to share some information with you You know after you died what happened Number one Some of you who left a wife after you and your wife is still alive, many of them, they already married. Now they are with different people, different husbands. That's what happened to your wives. The houses that were your residence occupied by some other people. Some other people have no idea. Now they are enjoying living your houses. And the money that you killed yourself to, to collect, the money distributed. You are not using it, other people are using it. So the wives are gone, the houses are gone, the property gone, the money is gone. That is all we know about what happened after you die. Now, can you share some information what happened to you and what can you tell us about what happened after you left us? Then Imam Ali said, Wallah. This is, I, I told you last night, don't say Wallah too many times. But this is a, a fact that Imam Ali is worth it to say, it, right? Sometimes the statement is so important that I swear by God. If those dead people were allowed to talk, they would tell us and they would share with us this information. They would tell us that this is what happened to us. We came here and we realized that the best saving for this second life is a taqwa, to be pious, to be mindful of God, to have good relationship with your Lord. That is the best thing. This is the information that we can share with you. Imam Ali said that would be their message, but unfortunately they don't have permission to communicate with us. أشهد حيازي مكل الموت فإن الموت لاقيكا فلا تجزع عن الموت وإن حل بواديكا Imam saying that fasten your belt for your departure. You know, you go to the airplane, fasten your belt. It says, make yourself prepare for that departure that is coming. And don't be scared of that. Don't be scared of that when it is coming to you. تَجَحَّزُوا رَحِمَكُمُ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ نُودِيَ فِيكُمْ بِالرَّحِيلِ Just be ready, be prepared, because already the nida is issued. You know that if there was no such a thing as death, life had no meaning. Life had no purpose. There was no a uh, fact about God's justice. How can you claim and how can you believe in justice of God and wisdom of God if there was no day of judgment and no death? Because lots of people come and they make mess in this world. So much injustice, so much oppression, so much pain and suffering. And then they go, like this Trump is doing all this mess in the world, and tomorrow he's dying, and nothing happened to him. And enjoy it, continue to enjoy it. There should be a justice at the end to take care of those people who created this. So, in this case, then, life is just a test. Life is an exercise. Life is a period of preparation. And... The Prophet said, and I'm concluding with this, he said, Would you like me to promise you paradise? I mean, everybody loves that. Everybody loves to go to paradise. And the Prophet said, If you promise me six things, I promise you paradise. 
What are those six things that the Prophet made a promise to take us to paradise if we practice those things? He said, اَذْمَنُوا لِي سِتَّنْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ اَذْمَنُوا لَكُمُ الْجَنَّةِ I promise you paradise if you promise me these six things. اِسْدَقُوا إِذَا حَدَثْتُمْ When you talk, tell the truth. Number one. وَأَوْفُوا إِذَا وَعَدْتُمْ When you promise, practice it. Fulfill your promise. وَأَدُّوا إِذَا تُمِنْتُمْ Be trustworthy when you are trusted. When people trust you, then show trustworthiness. وَحْفَدُوا فُرُوجَكُمْ Control your sexual desires. وَغُضُّوا أَبْصَارَكُمْ And your eyes. وَكُفُّوا أَيْدِيَكُمْ And your hands. If you are able to do these six things, the Prophet said, أَذْمِنُوا لَكُمُ الْجَنَّةِ It is so sad that in this world, the absence of these six moral qualities cause all this chaos, all these crimes, all this confusion in this world. The absence of honesty. The absence of fulfillment of the promise. The absence of trust. The absence of modesty and morality cause such a world that it is like a jungle and why people suffer from this because they do not remember that death this is why Imam Ali says not all the means to re remember repeatedly and increasingly the fact of life. The problem of people يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ عَنِ الْآخِرَةِ غَافِلُونَ that they see this, the appearance of this world and they are negligent of حيات الآخرة. So this is just uh, another uh, sentence from this letter number 69 that we explain why it is important to remember death. It is not to be sad, it is not to be scared. It is to appreciate the, the gift of life and to be satisfied to use this opportunity. Let me end with this uh, definition that somebody talked about life and express the, the fact of the gift of life in this way. He said, life is an opportunity, benefit from it. Life is a beauty, admire it. Life is a bliss, taste it. Life is a dream, realize it. Life is a challenge, meet it. Life is a duty, complete it. Life is a promise, fulfill it. Life is a sorrow, overcome it. Life is a struggle, accept it. Life is a tragedy, confront it. Life is too precious, don't destroy it. Whoever said this about life said it correctly. Life is a gift as death is a gift. And both are there to test us. May Allah help us to be successful in passing the tests of life successfully. It is very, very important, brothers and sisters, that we appreciate this life, that you and I, now we are here, we are alive, compared to those people who already died in the cemetery, they cannot do anything. We can do a lot. Somebody said, impossibility itself is saying, or impossible says, I'm possible, right? 
Impossible says, I'm possible. That means really there is no such an absolute impossibility in this life. If people are faithful, if they are determined, if they are disciplined, if they are willing to do things, there are a lot that we can do. The first thing is just to pray. That's the minimum thing. And we pray in this night of Jum'ah. Allahumma arzuqna tawfiq al-ta'a wa bu'd al-ma'asiyya wa sidq al-niyya wa arfan al-hurma wa akrimna bil-huda wa al-istiqama wa saddid al-sanatana bil-sadaad wa al-hikma wa amla' qulubana bil-ilm wa al-ma'rifah wa tahir butunna min al-haram wa al-shubha wa tafadhal ala ulamaina bil-juhdi bil-zuhdi wa al-nasiha وعلى المتعلمين بالرغبة وبالمستمعين بالاتباع وحسن السيرة وعلى مرضى المؤمنين بالشفاء والراحة وعلى موتاهم بالرأفة والرحمة وعلى مشايخنا بالوقار والسكينة وعلى الشباب بالإنابة والتوبة وعلى النساء بالحياء والعفة وعلى الفقراء بالصبر والقناعة وعلى الأغنياء بالتواسع والسعة وعلى الأمراء بالعدل والشفقة وعلى أسر المسلمين بالخلاص والراحة اللهم نسألك يا رب العالمين We ask you Lord of the world to help those suffering people the targets of terrorism in, in Kabul, in Cairo in Beirut, in Baghdad, in, uh, in Syria, in Sana'a, in Tripoli, in any where in this world from our neighborhoods when people are target of Islamophobia and ignorance and racism and hatred to anywhere in this world that people are victims of oppression and injustice help humanity Allah and make us an instrument of of healing, instrument of love, instrument of reconciliation. There are so much injustice in the world, oh God. So many people are in pain, the pain of poverty. They are wounded. And the, the, these wounds keep hurting them. It's all over. So much frustration, so much hopelessness and helplessness. We pray to you, O oh Allah, on the first Friday of this holy month of Ramadan, in such a humble night, in such a humble, beautiful, faithful gathering tonight of sisters and brothers. We ask you, Allah, for, for help. Help us to understand and appreciate the gift of life and help us to understand and be a people that you told us to be people of لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقَلُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَفْقَعُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Be under this category of these people. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.